Well, good afternoon. I'm Ken Busby, your cultural czar, member of the board of the Tulsa Symphony, and we're here today with clarinetist Amanda Hudnall, but that really doesn't do you justice. There's a better title for you, Amanda. I prefer Traveling Minstrel. I like that title a lot. I like that title a lot. Well, we'll get into that and why you like that title in just a second. But I just want to thank you for joining us today for our musician moment. And uh, and it's really been a fun way to connect with our, our wonderful Tulsa Symphony musicians and have uh, our audience uh, and get to know our players better because they see you on stage and, and so forth. And, and a lot of people just say, we just really don't know who these great people are that are performing for us. So this is our chance to, to learn about you. So um, tell us, let's just start with how long have you been with the Tulsa Symphony? This is my second season Okay. in the Tulsa Symphony. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. So only a half season, I guess, but I'm pretty new. Yes, you're pretty new. That's good. That's good. And you're enjoying your time with us? Yes. Good, good. Sure. I'm, we're glad. We're, we're certainly glad to have you with us. Um, now, let's talk a little bit, though, about why you like the title uh, Traveling Minstrel. Where all do you perform? Well, I perform all over the Midwest um, in per-service orchestras mostly, so I piece them together, and it's sort of like a full-time gig at the end of the day. Um, I play in Tulsa Symphony. I play in the Wichita Symphony as a sub for a few years now. I play in uh, Illinois Symphony in Springfield in Bloomington, Illinois. I've subbed in Sona down in Arkansas and Omaha Symphony and just other local things, pretty much anywhere within a four-hour drive of Kansas City. Okay, so Kansas um, City's home base. Kansas City's home base. Okay. But I don't have a home there, hence traveling minstrel. <laughs> <laughs> Hence the traveling minstrel, right? <clears throat> Some might call you a gypsy, but we'll call you a traveling minstrel sounds much better. But wh listen, where you are today is beautiful. Tell me what I'm looking at. That's a gorgeous backdrop. It is. Luckily, it's sunny today and beautiful weather. So I'm out on the porch enjoying it in Columbia, Missouri. That's nice. where my mom lives. And she has about 10 acres here and there's horses and dogs and cats and land. It's beautiful. Oh, it really is. Yeah, I'm, I'm jealous. It's great. Um, so we should probably find out, uh, besides that you like to obviously travel around, with at least within a four-hour area, uh, what drew you to the clarinet? You know, I really don't know. I think I should have played the flute, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> Is it, well, it's never too late to change, I guess. Uh, I think it's too late. <laughs> maybe it is. I don't know. I just got in line. You know, all my friends were joining band in seventh grade, and I thought, well, I want to do that. All my friends are doing it. And I don't I don't remember why I tried out clarinet mouthpiece, and they said, okay, you can play the clarinet. And then I just really got into it. So maybe it was meant to be. Uh, well, it sounds like it, because if, if they just handed it to you and you tried it, and then you really got into it, that's sort of like it was, yeah, it sounds like a meant-to-be moment. Yeah. So I don't know why, but. I don't question it now. <laughs> no, no, absolutely not. No, no. Um, so, hmm, that's interesting. Well, let's ask this question then. Um, if you weren't a clarinetist, and uh, let's just jump ahead to this one and say, and you weren't a flutist, what do you think you would be doing today? Well, since I haven't been playing as much, um, <laughs> since I don't have gigs right now, I've been kind of my exploring my alter ego as a handy woman. Uh, Okay. Mild contracting, then fixing drywall and like cleaning out plumbing and sinks and painting and a little oh, mild wow. carpentry also. So I think I would really like to get into maybe like wow. some kind of HGTV interior design kind of thing. Well, well, that's fun. Maybe we should maybe we should put up your phone number and email so people can contact you because I have a feeling there are people looking for this service right now. <laughs> That's all there is to do. <laughs> so, uh, since you do move around so much, do, do you do any uh, any uh, uh, teaching? You know, I taught several years ago when I was more based in Kansas City. Mm -hmm. um, and when I was in Chicago doing my master's in Northwestern, I was teaching more regularly. But right, right now, it, it'd be so hard to be in the same city every week to give regular oh, lessons. So, right. I've not been teaching other than a lesson here or there, like a special lesson or a little class mm -hmm, or mm -hmm. friend studio, something like that. But as far as a regular teaching schedule, I do not have one right now. I get you. I, it makes sense. It makes sense. So um, although the handiwork certainly gives you uh, other things to think about, do you have some specific hobbies or things you like to do in downtime? Oh, yeah. I'm a really big rock climber. Oh, cool. Tell us That's about a that. a big passion of mine. 
almost three years. Oh, okay. um, and I started in the gym where everything feels safe and there's padded flooring and it's really good. Um, but also love going outside. I like camping and hiking too. So that ties in really well. You go on a trip, you camp out, you hike to the rocks and then you climb all day. And it's just, I love being outside. So I do a lot of that. So you, and you said you came to that about three years ago. Yeah. How neat. And you follow that as a passion. That's cool. Um, what about, uh, so since you travel, so do you enjoy cooking at all? Well, cooking's kind of a rare treat for me. I since wonder. I don't have my own kitchen. Right. So, yeah. So when I'm staying at a place where I'm able to use a kitchen, I love cooking. Yeah. Neat. I just had a. If I, I had to do it all the time, it. I wouldn't like it very much. Uh, right, right. More of just as an avocation, something to enjoy doing occasionally. Occasionally. Exactly. Yeah, that's In funny. Heart. So, um, one of the questions that I, I like to ask, uh, and just curious, uh, what is on your music stand right now? Well, right now, it's back to basics for me. Um, okay. I was sick with a cold. Mm. So I didn't play for about three weeks. Bless your and heart. Wow. So I'm getting back into I'm doing my long tones. I'm doing the Behrman book. Yes. So skip. And then after that, I've got the Yettle, which is kind of a little more involved than the Behrman. But I'm really just one key a day going through them uh, at low tempo and then raising the tempos. I've also got a lot of unaccompanied clarinet music on my stand because, yeah, I haven't gotten a chance to really work on solo music in the past few years that I've been out of school, mm -hmm. you know, you always work full of recitals and then the recitals stop and you're in an orchestra and suddenly you're just practicing your parts all the time. And it's kind of nice to rediscover some yeah. of my favorites that haven't gotten played in so many years. That is so neat. I've, that is neat. Do, do you have, do you have a favorite composer? That's probably not a fair question. It's not fair. Okay. Um, sorry. But I can ask you a lot, so <laughs> I'm a little prepared. Um, I love Shostakovich. Okay, I would go with that. Love Prokofiev, mm -hmm. almost just as much. Um, Sibelius and Mahler, so kind of the early 20th century. I, I'm sensing that, yeah. Yeah, that's cool. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, as a musician, do you ever come to a, a piece when you're going to be performing it, and you're, you're, you're practicing it, and then you go to rehearsals of it, that you really just really don't enjoy? It's like I can do this, but it's just not really what I really like. Does that happen every every, every so often? It does, yeah. I'm kind just curious. Cheesy, cheesy oh, like okay. band sound music. You know, I'm in an orchestra. I'm not in a band, but there's always some some pieces that sound like this should be a band playing it. <laughs> gotcha. No, I follow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Makes sense. Makes sense. That's well, what <laughs> sure. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Um, well, listen, uh, I want to thank you for sharing some time with us today, and, and we're going to get to hear you perform now. I'm, I'm assuming a little bit of solo clarinet work, but what, what are we going to get to hear today? Exactly. Uh, I'll be playing, uh, it's one of many, it's a book of homages that mm. Bela Kovac wrote. Um, so there's homage to Bach and Weber. I'm playing the one to Manuel de Falla. Ooh. Well, Claire. But so it's de Falla influenced but Bella Kovach wrote it okay okay oh that'll be fun but it's jam-packed it's so much fun to play and it's for a clarinet which is kind of unusual because it's unaccompanied clarinet and usually b flat is what you would think mm -hmm. would be happening but right but this a little is something. this is a, so a little something different something for us to experience together well cool yeah. well uh, yeah well we will just sit back and relax and uh, enjoy uh, hearing uh, from you, and I'll, I'm sure you'll share a little bit more with us about the music uh, when you, when you when we hear your recording. But I just want to really thank you for your time today, Amanda, and thanks for joining us. And uh, stay safe. And I will look forward to seeing you in person very very soon. Me too. It's my pleasure. Thank you. Uh -huh. You take care now. Me too. Bye. Bye bye. Hi everyone. I'm going to play the Bela Kovac homage to Manuel de Falla. Bela Kovac is a Hungarian clarinetist who wrote this homage in the style of Manuel de Falla, who was an early 20th century Spanish composer. De Falla's music is considered very nationalistic to Spain, and you'll definitely hear that here in all the flamenco styling. 
Um, if you haven't heard of it, highly recommend checking out the Faya's El Amor Brujo, aka Love the Magician. It's fantastic music. But for now, enjoy this short work for solo clarinet. Thank you for listening. I can't wait till we can get back to the concert hall together. 